You're called to the ward to see a patient who is hypoxemic and working hard, and you think that they will benefit from high flow, maybe 30% oxygen with 30 liters per minute, and you're provided with a device that will give you oxygen and it gives you air, and you have to dial up the flow on the flow meters. Unfortunately, there is no way of measuring the FiO2. How do you figure this out? Well, that's what this tutorial is about. Tutorial 16, Hypoxic Respiratory Failure, Part 5, Oxygen Therapy, Part 2, Entrainment Ratios. Welcome back. Previously, we started to look at oxygen therapy and I made a big deal of discussing the problem of peak flow. And this is where the patient in peak inspiration may draw 30, 40, 50 litres of flow and why it's really important that the flow of oxygen and air mixed that reaches the patient has a sustained FiO2 across that peak flow period. We looked at the different devices that are used for oxygen therapy. The variable performance devices such as nasal cannulae or simple face masks, sometimes known as Hudson masks, and I looked at the pros and cons of each one of these. And then we looked at fixed performance devices, Venturi face masks and non-rebreather face masks. I'm going to elaborate on some of the material that I covered in, the, in that tutorial in a little bit more detail in this particular tutorial. What I'm going to talk about is entrainment ratios and why they're important and how to calculate out the inspired oxygen tension from an oxygen and air flow combination and how to calculate the flow rates and to look at why high flow oxygen therapy is necessary. Now, to really understand this particular topic of entrainment ratios, I think it's worth going to visit the operating room. Oscar is a 44-year-old male who's having an emergency laparotomy. This is for a perforated bowel. Shortly after induction of anesthesia, the oxygen sensor stopped working and there is no one about who can fix it, so you cannot measure the inspired and expired oxygen tension. You wish to deliver 30% oxygen to the patient, but have to figure it out using only flow meters. So this is a flow meter, and I mentioned in the previous tutorial that the gas emanating from a flow meter labeled oxygen is always 100%. So that's always 100% oxygen. And the air in the room around the flow meter is 21% oxygen, sometimes known as room air, otherwise known as air. When you place a patient on a mechanical ventilator and you dial up an FiO2 between 21% and 100%, you don't usually consider how the ventilator manages to deliver that exact FiO2. And what it has inside is a blender. Now, it's obviously not one of these blenders, but what that blender does, it mixes the oxygen and the air together and it precisely controls the output. Conventional face masks, nasal cannulae, and venti masks deliver a flow of oxygen that is blended. Now that's blended in the airway, in the case of nasal cannulae, in the mask and, and the airway with simple face masks or Hudson masks, and in the Venturi device in venti masks. Most of the time, we don't even consider the volume of air that must be entrained, but air must be entrained. If you're only giving 40% oxygen, then you're giving the rest of what the patient is receiving as nitrogen, and that is 60%. It's really important that you know the volume of air and the total flow the patient is given because of the problem of peak flow. And I mentioned this before, when the patient takes a breath, their peak flow must be matched by an oxygen FiO2 that stays stable at that level. In this particular picture, you can see the FiO2 is running along and during that peak flow period, the patient's FiO2 is robust. Whereas in this situation, when the patient takes a big breath, the FiO2 drops. And the reason why the FiO2 drops is the patient is in training more air to match that flow demand. And because they're in training more air, the inspired oxygen tension drops. And this is hugely problematic. Oscar is in the OR and the anesthesiologist needs to manually blend oxygen and air. Now, if you've never been in the operating room or you haven't paid that much attention, Oxygen, nitrous oxide, air are piped in into most operating rooms and in high pressure pipelines 
And these are the plugs that you connect to the anesthesia machine or other devices, including ICU ventilators, into. There's also a suction port that evacuates the anesthetic gases um, or has vacuum on it. So this is the oxygen port and this is the air port. And if you look at an anesthetic machine, this is a traditional anesthetic machine. Now, this is the last one we have in our department. Most of them have become all digital. But what you have on the left is a series of flow meters. And there's an oxygen flow meter, a nitrous oxide flow meter, and an air flow meter. And then beside those two are vaporizers for the volatile anesthetic agents. And you can see here on the oxygen flow meter, the oxygen has been turned on and it's running at 10 liters per minute. Now, it would be unusual to keep a patient like this receiving 100% oxygen for reasons that I've discussed in previous tutorials. And so the traditional approach in anesthesia for many decades was to deliver both oxygen and nitrous oxide to the patient at a ratio of 70 to 30. And the reason for giving nitrous oxide is that it reduces the amount of volatile agent that the patient requires. It has some analgesic properties and it smoothens the onset and offset of anesthesia. But frankly, it's not necessary. And these days, fewer and fewer anesthesiologists use this particular agent, although it is still valuable in certain circumstances. And you can see on this particular picture that the patient is receiving seven liters of nitrous oxide and three liters of oxygen. And this is really easy to figure out because nitrous oxide is just nitrous oxide. There's no nitrogen, there's no air, there's no oxygen. So you know if you give 10 liters combined flow and seven liters of this is nitrous oxide, then the inspired oxygen tension is 30%. It's a 70 to 30 ratio. So this is pretty easy. Now, one of the problems, of course, with nitrous oxide is that if for some reason somebody is able to turn off the oxygen flow meter, then the patient gets 100% nitrous oxide and then they will likely die of an anoxic brain injury because there is no oxygen in the nitrous oxide. So there is issues with it from that perspective. All the machines these days, of course, have protective mechanisms to start that from happening. So these days, the majority of anesthesiologists deliver just oxygen and air to their patients. When I see people just dialing up the flow meters these days, I'm always astonished how they decide and how much oxygen and how much air to give the patient, because it's not as simple as it might appear. And it seems to me that patients seem to get an awful lot more oxygen in the operating room than they used to when these old fashioned flow meters are used. Well, let's start here with three different flow meters. We have a nitrous oxide flow meter, an air flow meter, and an oxygen flow meter going from left to right. The cylindrical knobs are flow controls and they are turned on by clicking clockwise to release gas. And then the gas travels out and it blends in the tubing and it passes along the tubing to the fresh gas outlet and then on to the patient. Some of the, this gas is diverted off in a plastic sampling tube and that connects to a gas monitor. And the gas monitor reads the inspired and expired oxygen, nitrogen and nitrous oxide levels. Well, let's start with dialing up 10 litres of air. So you can see here that the air enters the fresh gas supply and passes unblended into the patient. The monitor measures an FiO2 of 21% and an Fi nitrogen of 79%. And this is air, this is just pure air. Now let's change things around. In this situation, we're going to give the patient something different. We're gonna give three liters of oxygen and seven liters of nitrous oxide. So that's 30 to 70. And as I previously mentioned, when you're doing this with these two particular agents, it's really easy to figure out the FiO2 because they're completely different gases and they have nothing in common with each other. And so this is what it looks like when you give 70 to 30 ratio of nitrous to oxygen. Now, for some reason, you may have started an operation using this mixture and then realized, oh, hang on a second, I can't use nitrous oxide here. For example, I'm doing a bowel case, so I'm going to turn that off. And so what you do is you turn off the nitrous oxide and then you turn on the air. So you're giving an air oxygen blend. The air and the oxygen now have blended. And the question here is, how do I figure out from looking at the flow that I'm giving the patient, how much oxygen the patient is getting when they're getting a mixture of oxygen and air? 
The anesthesiologist settles on seven liters of air and three liters of oxygen. What is the FiO2? So this is the situation. We have seven liters of air and we have three liters of oxygen. The oxygen is obviously 100% oxygen, but the seven liters of air contains 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. So the total FiO2 of this 10 liters must be more than 30% or 0.3. So let us remove the nitrogen from the seven liters of air. Now, as each liter contains 21% oxygen, there is 210 mils of oxygen per liter of air. That's 0.21 liters. So we have seven times 0.21 liters. We'll add all of these bits of oxygen to the pool of oxygen that we already have. And the total amount of oxygen is now 4.47 liters, about four and a half liters. Now we know that from a total flow of 10 liters, we have an oxygen component of approximately 4.5 liters. Let's do some basic mathematics here. 4.47 divided by 10 is approximately 4.5 divided by 10, and that works out at 0 0.45. And that's the FiO2 0 0.45, or the proportional oxygen content of one liter is 45%. So for the 10 liters of flow, the FiO2 is 45%. And that was fun, but you know, surely there must be an easier way of doing this. And there is, of course, and this is the equation that you should know. The FiO2 is the air flow multiplied by 0 0.021 plus the oxygen flow divided by the total flow. So let's just work that problem. The air flow here we know is 7 litres. The oxygen flow is 3 litres. And the total flow is, of course, 10 litres. And that works out at 1.47 plus 3. And that works out at 4.47 divided by 10 or 0.45 or 45%. Let's do another one of these. What is the FiO2 if the patient is receiving three liters of air and one liter of oxygen? Let's work the problem using the same equation. So the airflow is three liters and that's multiplied by 0 0.021, so that's a small number, uh, plus one liter over the total flow of four liters. So that works out at 0 0.63 plus one and that, of course, is 1.63 divided by 4, and that works out at 0 0.25 or 25% oxygen. But hold on here. I am an anesthesiologist, and I'm not comfortable using that low in FiO2. I really want to give the patient 30% oxygen. How do I figure this out with 4 liters of flow? Well, this is the most important equation in this tutorial, the relative ratio of air to oxygen, and it's really easy. The key thing to understand, of course, is that air contains 21% oxygen, so you have to essentially transfer that oxygen from the air side over to the oxygen side. And this is the calculation. It's 100% minus the FiO2 divided by the FiO2 minus 21%. Let's work this problem. So we want to give the patient 30% oxygen with just 4 litres of flow, and the FiO2 fed into this equation is 30%. Let's do the oxygen to air equation. So we have 100 minus 30, which is 70, divided by 30 minus 21, and that's 9. And that equals 70 over 9, or an 8 to 1 ratio. So what we have are 8 parts air to 1 part oxygen. And of course, we're giving four liters total flow. We will divide four by eight, and that gives us half a liter of oxygen. If you are delivering four liters of total flow and want to give 30% oxygen, then you dial up 3.5 liters of air and 0 0.5 liters of oxygen. This is a critical care scenario that you can do yourself. There is 30 liters of flow, and I want to give 35% oxygen. How many liters of oxygen do I need to dial up? Again, I'll give you the equation if you want to pause here and do it out yourself. That's terrific. Okay, the FiO2 is 35%, so feeding that into the equation, 
we have 100 minus 35, and that's 65, divided by 35 minus 21, and that's 14. 65 divided by 14 is a 4.621 ratio. So essentially you have 4.5 parts of air to one part oxygen. If you're giving 30 liters, that's 30 divided by 4.6 or 6.5 liters of oxygen. In this situation, if you want to give 30 liters of flow to get 35% oxygen, you will need 23.5 liters of air and 6.5 liters of oxygen to achieve your goals. I'm using a 40% Venturi device, that's the red one, with 10 liters of oxygen flow. So remember how the Venturi works. The fresh gas flow goes into the narrow part of the nozzle there, and on the side of it, it says 40% and 10 liters per minute. So 10 liters per minute of oxygen flow but of course, that oxygen is 100% as it goes into the Venturi, so you must entrain air through the side vents. And the question is, if I'm giving 10 liters at 40%, how much air do I have to entrain to ensure we get the right air oxygen blend and also meet the patient's peak flow demand? To figure this out, you need an oxygen to air ratio, but instead of going to the calculation that I have here on the screen, I'm going to show you a back of envelope technique that you might find useful. It's colloquially known as the magic box. And the, the first thing you do is you draw a box. And in the middle, we have the FiO2 that we wish to deliver. On the upper left hand side, we have 20 or 21, and that is the amount of oxygen in room air. Down below, we have the amount of oxygen coming out of the flow meter. And of course, that is always 100%. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the FiO2 from 100 to get the oxygen component. And we're gonna subtract the FiO2 from room air or vice versa. The sign doesn't matter, minus or plus, to get the air component. So let's work the problem. So what we have to start with is an FiO2 of 0 0.04 and a 10 liter flow. And I've put the 20 and the 10 up there on the, on the left hand side of the magic box. And we're going to draw 40 in the middle. So we'll subtract 40 from 100 and that's 60 and 20 from 40 and that's 20. And let's put these in the equation. We have 60 over 20. And that works out at a 3 to 1 ratio, which means that the total parts here are 3, 3 parts air, 1 part oxygen. So the total number of parts is 4. And to work out the total flow, because remember, we have 10 litres of flow um, of oxygen going in. So we must, must have 3 times 10 litres of air. 3 times 10 plus 10 is 40 litres. And that's how you figure out the total flow uh, going into your patient. Let's do it again. I'm using a blue Venturi. What is the total flow? And the blue Venturi, of course, is 24% with two liters. And so let's work the problem. Now, for a low FiO2 like this, you have to use 21 up in the top left-hand corner. So 21 there and 100. And we're going to put 24 in the middle of the magic box and subtract 20, 100 from 24, and that's 76. And 21 from 24, and that's 3. And we put these in our equation, it's 76 over 3. That's a big number, and that works out at roughly 25 to 1. That is 25 parts air for one part oxygen. And as we have 2 litres of oxygen, that's 2 parts oxygen, we'll have 2 times 25 plus 2, or 52 litres of total flow. That's a really enormous flow when you consider just how little oxygen that you're giving the patient, but that's how much they need to draw in to make sure they get 24% oxygen. Let's do it again for 28%. We put 28 here in the middle. We'll subtract 28 from 100, and that's 72. We'll subtract 21 from 28, and that's 7. So it's 72 over 7, and that works out at a 10 to 1 ratio, 10 parts air for one part oxygen. And as there are four parts of oxygen there, we have four times 10 plus four or 42 liters. Now we can do the same thing for the 31% um, version, and it's 31 in the middle, and that works out at 48 liters. And for the 35, and you can calculate this out yourself if you want, that works out at 
45 liters and it's the exact same way of doing it. We'll just work out one more together here and that is the 60% FiO2 one. And so here we are, 60% oxygen. This is the green venturi and it has 15 liters of oxygen flow. So let's put 60 here in the middle of the magic box and we're gonna subtract 60 from 100 and that leads to a 40. And we're gonna subtract 20 from 60 and that also results in 40. And we'll feed these into the equation. We have 40 over 40 and that works out at a one-to-one -one ratio, which means one part air for each part oxygen. Wow, what does that mean? Well, if we have 15 liters of flow here, that means we have 15 liters of air and 15 liters of oxygen, and that results in a total flow of 30 liters. Now that we have briefly looked at the various different venturis, and we've used the two different versions of the oxygen to air calculation. Let's just tabulate all of this and have a look at the big picture. And you can see on the left hand side of this table, we have the inspired oxygen tension that's on the side of the Venturi going from 24, 28, 31, 35, 40% and 60%. And then the relative fresh gas flow in sequence two, four, six, eight, ten, 10 and 15. And you can see on the, on the third row, the entrainment ratio of air to oxygen. And it starts off really high at 25 to one. And then it drops a bit and it kind of equalizes out at between five and 10 to one from 28 to 35. And in those levels, you get a flow of 40, 45, 48 liters, pretty impressive flow. Even if someone is in quite significant respiratory distress, that total flow should be perfectly fine as long as they're saturating. But then when you get to 10 liters, 40%, the entrainment ratio is three to one. And that's because the amount of oxygen that you're giving is heading up towards 100%. And so there isn't that much space for giving air. And that's why the entrainment ratio has dropped to three to one, but you're still getting 40 liters. And I think this is a, a major cutoff. Now, what you need to remember always is that peak inspiratory flow. And the peak flow is hard to measure. We don't really know what it is. There's a rule of thumb that the total flow must be three to four times the minute volume. And often even in quite distressed patients, that minute volume doesn't tend to exceed 10 liters, but it can. And particularly if patients are really distressed. So where you really run into trouble is when you go above the 40% range. And you can do that with nasal cannulae, you can do it with simple face masks, or you can do it with that green venturi mask, but looky here, that 60% venturi is really marginal if your patient's in respiratory distress. 30 liters of flow is not great. And so if you're getting up to 60% oxygen with 15 liters of flow, a third of total flow of 30 liters, I think you really need to think about using high flow devices such as high flow nasal oxygen. Let's look at one last question before we leave this tutorial. What oxygen flow should be given to obtain an FiO2 of 50% with a total flow of 70 liters? This is a different equation. So the oxygen flow in liters per minute is equal to the total flow multiplied by the FiO2 minus 21 over 79. That's the non-oxygen component of air. So let's work the problem here. We have 70 liters of total flow with the desired FiO2 of 50% or 0.5. So this is 70 multiplied by 50 minus 21, that's 29, multiplied by 70 divided by 79. And that works out at 2030 over 79. And when you work that out, the total oxygen flow is 25 liters. So if you're delivering 70 liters of total flow and you want to give 50% oxygen, then you will need 45 liters of air and 25 liters of oxygen to ensure adequate blending. But of course, if you're giving 70 liters of flow, you're not using a regular device. You're using some form of high flow device because where you really run into trouble is when the FiO2 required is high and the flow required is high as well. And that's where high flow devices come in because they resolve the problem of flow demand inadequacy. They allow precise control over oxygen to air blending at any FiO2 from 21 to 
And of course, air can be obtained from a pipe source or a condenser in the machine or even entrained from the room, but it's always well controlled, unlike from Venturi's or simple face masks, where the control can be very variable. The FiO2 and the flow are independent of one another, so you don't have this problem of the flow reducing, the total flow reducing as the FiO2 goes up. For example, you can give 40% oxygen with 20, 40, 60, 80 liters of flow and there's no problem. So let's review this tutorial. In this tutorial, I discussed the problem of blending and flow. We discussed entrainment ratios and we looked at a bunch of different calculations that you can do to figure out how much oxygen, how much air you need for a specific FiO2 and how to achieve an FO2 by adjusting the total flow. I also introduce you to the magic box approach for figuring out the air to oxygen mixture. Next time I will discuss high flow oxygen therapy and why it's necessary, high flow oxygen systems and high flow nasal oxygen. Join me then. So that was entrainment ratios. I hope you found that useful. The next tutorial in this series will be on high flow oxygen. If you're finding these tutorials useful, please subscribe on YouTube and give me lots of likes. You can also follow these tutorials at ccmtutorials.org. Please leave me some comments. See you soon.